Hello, happy campers. We hope you're having a wonderful week. Well, haven't we had a great week down here at the Let's Go South Australia Caravan Camping and Outdoor Show down at the Adelaide Showgrounds. It's been so good. So fantastic. It looks like Katie's already had a couple of vino. She's got her dancing shoes on. Oh, it's a buzz. I love showtime. It's, there's such a good energy and being able to meet everybody who's there and excited yeah. about, you know, whether they're about to hit the road, they're looking at different vans or vehicles. I mean, it's, it is so cool. It is always a buzz and this is a mega show. We didn't have any idea that it was going to be so busy. We have met, I was going to say hundreds, but it would probably be fair to say thousands of people. And, yeah. and we didn't want you to miss out on the weekend. So we're going to take you back to one of our all-time favorite favourite episodes, mm. and this one is from Tasmania. Wow, you can transport me there now. Yeah, it's so good. We love it. It is jam-packed with amazing people, incredible food experiences, incredible beverages. Mm. What's not to love about Tassie? Oh, the scenery, the environment. We love it all, mm -hmm. and we know that you're going to love it too. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if you watch this episode and then you book something. Oh, You'd be yeah. crazy not to, just quietly. <laughs> All right. Enjoy next week. Back to normal viewing. See you then. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Coming up in this week's episode. This week, we are bringing you the complete Tasmania Touring Guide, everything that you'll need to know before you go. Including the best campground, the best foodie experience, the best waterhole, the best tours and attractions, best free activities, the locals' favourite and Tassie's number one destination, as well as the must-have apps, maps and resources that you'll need to make the most of your time in Tasmania. And you asked for it, and we've listened. We've now released our complete 160-page Tasmania Touring Guide eBook Bundle, the complete guide to getting around this extraordinary island state. And we'll share the details on how to get your hands on that in this week's episode. All right, time to grab a drink. Let's do it. Okay, we have made lots of notes. So I've got my cheat sheets here to try and bring you the best of the best. Look, if you get off the spirit of Tassie, you can turn left or right. Mm -hmm. We have done both. Yeah. And lap around the island would take you about 1,500 kilometers thereabouts. In our three months of touring, we did just over 3,500 kilometers. So mm -hmm. to say that we tried to get to every corner and see as much as we can, really would be an understatement and we still miss stuff oh exactly and we are still compiling a list for our next visit it seems to be one of those places that you'll yeah. continue to return to because it is jam-packed with so much to see and do in fact our number one tip and this is something that we hear lots and lots from travelers and we see it pop up in the traveling groups I'm coming to Tassie for a week or two weeks or three weeks. Mm. We're going to whip around the entire island. We're going to hit all of these top spots. Our best advice to you is to slow down. The whole reason why we created these different road trips is to give you options and really pick a region. You know, if you've got a short amount of time, pick one road trip and do that well because guaranteed mm. you will want to return to Tassie and then you will be able to make the most of it and see as much of the island. Perfect. All right. Now, this guide is really going to give you the best, okay, mm. best experiences, destination, <laughs> yeah. campsites, free, low cost, you name it, foodie, beverage, the works, apps, maps, resources, everything that we used to create those mm -hmm. itineraries we'll share with you in tonight's episode as well as a bit of a recap on the top 10 things that you need to know before you go on the spirit of tasmania which mm. is very relevant because most people that are traveling with a rig of some type or even their own just car will be traveling on the spirit of tassie yeah awesome all right ah national parks pass great okay tip number one two yep. doesn't matter most important tip before you go to tasmania is to get yourself a national parks pass almost the entire state is national park i mean it is amazing and you are going to be within an hour or so drive no matter where you are on the island so you do want to get this sorted if you're heading over on the spirit of tas Buy it on the ship. You will get a discount. Yeah. Otherwise, jump online. It is so easy. There are different passes to suit 
the amount of time that you are going to be exploring this beautiful island. So do get that sorted because no matter where you go, you will need it. Okay, fantastic. Tip number two, subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Here's our shameless plug. Look guys, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe now, what are you doing? Uh, like, comment, if you do comment, we will get back to you. Yes, eventually. It's taking a little longer these days, but we are trying to get back to every single comment we receive. So please let us know what you think, what you'd like, what you'd like to see more of, mm -hmm. and we will listen. Yes, absolutely. And if you do love us, then share. If you wanna give us a virtual hug, share our channel with those that you think this could inspire or help on their travels or their planning. Yeah, and all of that helps get our content out there even more so that more people can see it and get inspired and that is Help totally the algorithms. what we love. All right, there you go. That's our <laughs> shameless plug. Okay, we're into it. The best free camp in Tassie for us. Okay. Well, this was your favourite. Yeah. And Absolutely. it is in the Freycinet National Park. It is the Friendly Beaches National Park Campground. It is free. You do need your National Parks Pass, but you'll already have that sorted, right? Yeah, look, we were so <laughs> lucky. We rocked up uh, against our normal rule. You know, you need to get to a campground generally by lunchtime mm. and these free camps. We rocked up at 5 p.m. Mm. and fluked it. But look, there was a changing of weather, the ruggedness of the coast, running along that beach with Jasper, mm. feeling like the best dad in the world, mm. watching him and his joy was the highlight for me. Absolutely, and this is one of the locals' favourites, and you know you're on a winner when you talk to the locals and they say, yep. yeah, we go there on our holidays. Okay, best low-cost campground. Oh, this was a hard one to choose from. I might just jump in here and say, we back and forth over these decisions, didn't we? This didn't <laughs> come easy, this information. There is so much goodness in Tassie. But Stanley, the recreation grounds right next door to the Stanley Golf Course. So we're northwest Tasmania looking over that amazing nut, that core of that ancient volcano. This was such a fantastic campground. What I love about this, it's $10 a night. There is a dump point recently been put mm -hmm. in. Uh, you do just help yourself, but you probably could fit around about 50 to 60 campers and caravans in that site. Yeah. There is a freshwater tap. We saw people joining their hoses together to fill up their tanks so yep. they could stay longer. Yes. Uh, $10 a night. If you stay seven, it's $50. You only pay for five. You get two free. Yep. Awesome. Right on the beach, close walk into town. Can't complain. Love Stanley. Okay. Best full hookup. That's the best full paid caravan mm. experience. Yeah, and again, we armed and armed and back and forth on this one, but the one that really took the... The cake. The cake, yes, exactly, yeah. was the NRMA Port Arthur down there on the stunning Tasman Peninsula. It really just ticks all of the boxes and its mm. location and what you have at your doorstep to explore was the reason why we chose this one. Look, it's very unique to be able to camp in a World Heritage listed area. Yes. So that makes it quite unique. Mm -hmm. The walk down to Stewart's Bay, oh, oh goosebump good. Yeah, All right. stunning. And of course, Port Arthur Historic site right on your doorstep. Yes. Uh, the best foodie experience <gasps> outdoor <sighs> would have to go to Mel Shell's Oyster Shack. Yes, I love this little <laughs> so spot. Good. So quirky, so unique. Stop in at Swansea so that you can get to Mel Shell's. We're on the east coast of Tasmania right now. Just a really rustic, relaxed, awesome experience. Do you know what it is? It's it's the locals hang out. There are yeah. many more famous seafood options along this stretch. I yeah. mean, the lobster shack a little oh, bit yes. further up the road, but for us, this was awesome. We loved it. Yeah, go and cook your own kebabs, have a glass of wine from the winery that literally is around the bend on the river called The Bend, yeah. and just take in this awesome environment. Okay, best foodie experience indoor. <sighs> This was so hard. I mean, you <laughs> yes. will know, we are about to produce the taste of Tasmania, how to eat and drink your way around the Apple Isle. It will be an audio book. It will be an e-book as well. We ate and drank so much. So these decisions did not come lightly. <laughs> the best indoor experience 
for us and for certainly for me was in Geeston, so south of Hobart, down in that Huon Valley region, Harvest and Light, Cassie's Pickery. Again, this was such a unique experience. We'd never experienced anything like this before. No. Cassie's produce is amazing. She collaborates with the local producers. Awesome. Yeah, we loved it. And again, you know, someone that passionately does what they love to do and then shares it. Oh, can't go wrong. So good. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we talked about last night actually contacting Cassie and seeing if she will uh, ship. Yes. Across to the big send island. Send us some pickles. Yes. All right, here we go. Best takeaway experience. This ha one was really down. easy. Yeah. yeah. Masaki. Yes, the famous surfing sushi chef, also mm. in Jeeveston, down there in the south of Hobart. He will ruin you though. I am just warning you, you will not be able to eat sushi anywhere else around this country after you have had a box of Masaki's amazing, it's artwork, it is just incredible. Incredible, and he's catching and uh, collecting, harvesting his own produce, seafood, remarkable. Oh, so good. All right, thank you Masaki. Let's stop All right, talking about food. Here we go, uh, <laughs> best on water experience. Oh. Yes, what was the best experience we did on the water as a family? Yeah. Gordon River Cruises. Yeah, and we, look, we love the water and you will notice a theme through our episodes, wherever we can get out and do an experience or a tour on the water, we will. Gordon River, hands down, some of the most amazing environment in Tasmania. It is within the World Heritage Wilderness Area and for good reason. You Two options for cruises, we've done both. This one was amazing. Oh look, it, it was very VIP, high end this one, wasn't it? Yes. So you know, sitting back and out, felt like business class on the water in a world heritage area. Yeah. Drinking wine. Stunning. Eating ocean trout. Yes. Does wow. it get any better? No. We've got to stop talking about food. Okay, let's do it. Uh, best land experience. This was very recent actually. Yes, it was. And again, so hard to pick and choose from all of these amazing places and experiences. What we really loved was our walk on Kunanyi in Hobart, Mount Wellington, rising up in the mm. background of this awesome city. And to get out there with Andy and hear his passion and follow in Charles Darwin's footsteps and learn all about that history and the geology yeah. and the environment, Look. and then to stand on the summit. It's his passion again. I mean, this guy grew up on the mountain. He grew out of the mountain. Like, he's just part of the mountain, isn't he? <laughs> yes. He's unreal. So, yeah, absolutely. That was our highlight mm. of our Hobart experience. Okay, uh, best history experience. Again, this was hands down Port Arthur yeah. historic site. Wow. Yeah. Totally underestimated what this site was going to be and the experience that we would have there. And it is just phenomenal and mm. so worthy of a full day or a return visit. Your ticket does give you two consecutive days. You'll want to use that to really immerse yourself in this incredible environment. It, it's hard to believe that this can be so well preserved after all of these years. Yeah. And the stories that come from this place are just amazing. Must be good management. Maybe. <laughs> all right, here we go. Best wildlife experience. Again, this was obvious to us. Pennicott Journeys, wow. Yeah. Look, they have, I think, now six experiences that you can do, different tours and cruises around the island. Mm -hmm. Just pick one of them, as we <laughs> say. You will not go wrong. No, absolutely. Hands down was our Tasman Island cruise that held the title from our first visit in Tasmania. Yeah. Then we did the Wine Glass Bay cruise and we saw that incredible pod of dolphins. Wow. I mean, just in, just amazing, mind blowing. And these guys, their ethos about sustainability and protecting the environment, well worth supporting with your dollar. They are world leaders mm. as far as being conservation champions. Yep. And we will continue to tell everyone we know to go and do these Yeah, tours. and we'll continue to tick off then. Yeah, I can't wait to, <laughs> to do the next one. They've actually got one uh, out of uh, Wilson's yeah. prominent tree. Yeah. If I said that right, in Victoria. Yep. That'd be worth checking out too if you're on the mainland in mm. Victoria. Awesome. Okay, what am I up to? Best free experience. Yes. What's our best free experience? Walk around Dove Lake. 
Wow. Yeah, just... Katie didn't stop... Jaw dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Katie did not stop smiling the entire almost seven kilometres of this walk. Mm -hmm. Jasper, very proud of him, did it on his own two feet. It's an easy, it's like a grade two, so yeah. easy to do, but so incredibly, you know, what do they say? It's extraordinarily beautiful. I mean, it is, uh, yeah, it's that. Yeah, it really right. is. Of course, you need your National Parks Pass, but again, you've got that sorted. So to be able to go and immerse yourself in this environment, do you know what I love? Mm -hmm. Reading the history and the people who came here hundred plus years ago and saw Cradle Mountain and decided that this place needed to be experienced by everyone and henceforth it was made a national park and available for all of us to experience. Mm. It is that special yep. and you can hike for 7Ks with a massive smile on your face. The, the couple of things that are outstanding about this, I mean it is in the centre of 1.4 million hectares of World Heritage Area. Yep. And as far as meeting criteria to get a World Heritage listing, you only have to meet one out of 10, it meets seven. So mm -hmm. it is the world leading World Heritage listed site. Yes, and you can feel it when you go there because yeah. it is just amazing. Love it, okay. Best National Park. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, how do you choose on an island that is covered in amazing national parks? Look, we promised ourselves we would not be fence sitters. We're totally fence sitters. On this one. You could go to any national park in Tasmania and be awestruck. Yeah. Look, the problem for us when we were deciding this one is we started to make a list. Oh, Cradle Mountain, Freycinet, and then we went, Mount hang on. Field. Oh, yeah, Mount Field, the Tasman, down on the Tasman Peninsula. Mm. There are so many national parks. The Southwest, Gordon Franklin Rivers National Park. There are too many and they are all spectacular. Yeah. So just get out there and visit some of them. There are so many that we are yet to experience and they are on our list for next time we go yeah, to Yeah, look, Tassie. we even went um, and had a little bit of time out in Mount Field National Park mm. and we haven't even covered that in our episodes and it was incredible. Yep. Yep, okay, next visit. Uh, best human interaction. This was a really easy one. Greg, Duncan, mm -hmm. The Wall, Derwent Bridge. Amazing, amazing, inspiring, mm. passionate man. What he has created there, and you will hear the hype. If you are going to Tasmania, you will have every Tassie local say to you, have you visited the wall? Yes. You should go to the wall. Trust them, believe them, book your tickets, go to the wall, mm. go and see what Greg has created. And if you are lucky enough, like us, he'll be on the front door when you get there and you'll be able to have a yarn to him. Yeah. What an amazing man. I honestly, it made me feel like anyone can do anything. Yeah. After you hear about his full story, we'll put the link for that interview that I, you know, feel very honoured to have had with Greg uh, in the description below. Mm -hmm. uh, but look, the amount of challenges that he and his family have mm -hmm. faced through their time to create and follow his dream, he'd never even picked up a chisel. And he's, he told his wife, I've thrown my job. I mean, I mean it's remarkable. Yeah. Anyway. Check that out. Oh, amazing. It will inspire you to, to do something. Totally. Yeah. Okay, wrapping it up now, getting to the end. The hardest one that we had to do was the overall number one destination. Mm -hmm. Proof that we don't always agree. <laughs> no, that's true. So <laughs> I'll give you mine and Katie can give you hers. Look, it had to tick all the boxes for us. Yeah. And for me, Freycinet National Park on the East Coast, it actually is the most outstanding part of the East Coast. Mm. If you were going to only go to one part of the East Coast, Freycinet, I mean, there's Coles Bay, Wineglass Bay, the wildlife, the walks, mm. um, friendly beaches, free camp is there, Mel Shells is around the corner. Yeah. I loved it. Best pizza on the island. Mm. It is certainly yep. a stunning, stunning environment, as is my number one, which is the southern Hobart region, including the Huon Valley, stretching down to Cockle Creek. Again, wow. it ticks so many boxes. You've got beautiful green rolling hills of the valleys. You've got that spectacular Huon River that just weaves its way through these little townships. You've got the amazing beaches of Cockle Creek, that pristine, untouched environment. 
food producers more cider than you're ever going to be able to drink. <laughs> I gave it a good crack. There is so much to love about that region. Wow, yes indeed. <laughs> and can I just give a shout out to the Carowin, Sale Carowin yes. with Dave. Yeah. Look, this is a guy, again, he's not in our list, but I have to give him a shout out because, again, someone who's just dedicated their entire heart and life to, mm. you know, a labour of love to bring this vessel from almost a derelict condition mm -hmm. to where now he has just started to welcome passengers on board. Yeah. Go and support Dave. You will love this experience. Yes, out of beautiful Franklin in the yeah. Huons, sailing along the Huon River. Amazing. All right, he wasn't on my list, but... Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Dave. All right, number one, bucket list. Now, coming down to Tasmania for our second time, Katie had a bucket list item that was on our first visit and mm -hmm. we didn't get to do it. Mm -hmm. And so you got to this time? Absolutely. Easy one, Cradle Mountain. Yeah. I mean, it is the, the icon for Tassie. Mm. It was everything and more that I anticipated it was going to be. It was my birthday, which I think just adds so much to it. The fact that we were able to go spoil ourselves with a few days in a, in a nice hotel room in something a little bit larger than 17 square metres. But to be able to experience this incredible national park and mm. it's so much more than that. And it's not until you're there that you really realise how special this place is. So that if you've only got a minute and you want to experience everything Tassie has to offer, this would be a great yep. place to go no matter what season. I can't wait to go back and see the snow on Cradle Mountain and some of that imagery where the snow is like... Unbelievable. Oh, awesome. Look, Jasper's number one wish was to see snow while we were in Tassie. And look, <laughs> you can actually see snow any month of the year. Yeah. We didn't get to experience that. Sorry, Jasper. Not but he time. did ask to include his number one experience, and that was the West Coast Wilderness Railway. Mm. This is a first-class, world-class experience. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Out of Queenstown or Strawn over there on the West Coast. If you could pick one or the other go from Queenstown. Yes. Because well, you get to experience the Rack and Pinion, which is the only place in Australia that you can actually do that. Yeah, awesome. Okay, here we go. We're moving now on to the apps. The apps that we can definitely vouch for, recommend, yeah. and that we used every day that we were traveling. Yep. Wikicamps, I'm sure that most of you out there watching this will know what that is. Yep. Uh, again, we'll put all of these details in the description so that you don't have to go searching for them. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Helps you find anything and everything you need to know about camping, staying, low cost, full cost, everything you need Dump to know. Dump points, water access, okay. local attractions. Willy Weather. Mm. Okay. This would be our number one choice as far as a weather app goes. Yep. They Do get it right. 90% of the time. Yeah, look, and if Willy Weather doesn't get it right, just talk to a local because they seem to know yeah. exactly what is going on with Tassie's weather and when it's going to happen. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> particularly on the East Coast. You know, we're like, oh, it's going to be raining in the next three days, and they said, no, nah, no, nah, it's not. Yeah, don't believe it. Yeah, and they were right. Yep, okay. Um, the Trail Forks mm. app. Now, this is very new to us, really, to be actually using. Um, you can download specific to Australian region, and then you can basically go into any part of wherever you are around Australia. In Tassie, boom, pull a map up, and then it just keeps opening up more and more trailheads uh, for every type of traveler, grade, mm -hmm. you name it, it's all available in there fantastic app. What is so awesome about Tasmania is that there are so many different walks that you can do and it doesn't yep. have to be a massive hike. We did short little walks to spectacular waterfalls. Yep. We did seven kilometre walks to waterfalls. We, you know, we did the national park walks. There is so much on offer yep. for everyone. Look, the, the other thing is that there are two world-class, world-renowned walks that we are yet to do. And once Jasper's a little older and I'm feeling a little fitter, yeah. <laughs> we'll do them. The Overland Track yeah. out there at Cradle uh, to St. Clair in the National Park. Yeah. And then also the Three Capes Walk. 
Yes. Wow, breathtakingly. Awesome. I'm rearing. Let's stunning. go. I've got my backpack yeah. ready. <laughs> You'd be right. All right. Uh, now we're going to move on to maps. Yes, but before we do, I will just say the East Coast region of Tassie had their own app, and this was great. great as well. So everything that you would expect to find in a tourist guide on an app if you just search for East Coast Tasmania. That was a good resource awesome as well. Awesome tip. Okay, maps. Google Maps probably seems a bit obvious. We find that's generally better than, say, Apple Maps. Mm, yeah. uh, Psygig, we've spoken about this many times on our show. You can put yeah. in the parameters of your vehicle height, weight, length, and that can save you a lot of headache and yeah. potentially heartache for yes. low-hanging bridges and getting stuck. We have certainly reversed out of some sticky situations and caused some problems. <laughs> Don't be like us. <laughs> Get that app, Psygig. It is a, a little bit of an outlay. A good tip there, every now and then they mm. give 50% off. So just keep it, and it comes up every few months. Yeah. They give big discounts on a lifetime purchase of that app. Yeah. Or you can do a monthly subscription. All right, uh, Season Produce Guide. Oh, yeah, We've this got guy. this one. This guy. Fantastic, you can get that on the Spirit of Tasmania. In fact, all of these um, handheld guides. This one. <laughs> This one. Yeah, <laughs> the wine trails, <laughs> yes. And the Tasmania travel and touring. It is awesome. Yep. We love maps. Da, 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 da. You know, it's so Look good because this is another tip too. If you've got kids, get them involved in the decision making. Even if you've made the decision yeah. already. Let them know where the plan is, the region, and then let them point it out. And I mean, it's it's awesome. The excitement in Jasper when he has touched something on the map and then he sees the sign in real life. Yep. It, it actually all clicks. You know, you see it. You see it working. So yeah. get well, the kids involved. What's great about these maps too is you can roll them out and they are jam packed with attractions, points of interest. Yeah. So you can really get yeah. in and see what is where and where you want to go. Do you know what we love? You can walk into a pub <laughs> and they, the people behind the bar will pull one out and they'll mark it up for you and they give it to you. Yeah. And that's happened on multiple occasions. And you speak yeah. to other people who've been to Tassie and they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. Oh, did they mark up your map? Yeah, exactly. We've it's even cool. sat around with other campers who have brought their maps over to compare with our maps. What did they circle on your map? Where yeah. did they tell you yeah. to go? So it's a, it's a very cool thing that just seems to be ingrained in Tasmanian yep. locals. Yep, sharing is caring. All yes. right, here we go. We're on to resources. Okay, look, the best advice we can give you on the resources is to download our free quick e road itinerary guides mm. on our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com, because we've embedded the resources, digital resources, from all of those other websites that have helped us. So it, it's free. Yep. Yeah. If you want to support us and you want to keep our wheels turning, uh, this is something that's very new to us and Katie's done incredibly good job, uh, beautiful design awesome. on a full comprehensive road tri trip itineraries. They're all around 20 pages long. Mm, or more. Yeah, you can purchase those through our website as well mm. if you want to get the real detail and all the juice. Yeah, absolutely. All the places that we went, the points of interest, little mm. things that you may not get from searching the internet. Yeah. You guys have been asking us for ages to put together road trip itineraries and so Tassie was the perfect, I guess, testing ground for us to do that and they, they have come up so beautifully. They are all individual on our website. We are going to, we've listened, we're going to put them all into one comprehensive, oh. comprehensive guide. Yeah, look, <laughs> it'll be over 160 pages of pure Tasmanian bliss. Yes. yes. Really awesome job, Katie. And they're $11.95 each, or if you want to get the bundle pack, they will be $26.95 mm. for that complete Tassie. E e ebook guide to Tassie, yes. yes. Awesome. Alright, and by the way, we did mention anyone who purchased the individual packs or the bundled pack now mm -hmm. will receive the audio guide which we are recording called The Taste of Tasmania. Mm -hmm. We'll make that a separate product as well that will also have an audio and an ebook attached to it yeah. if you want to purchase that. Yes, if you want to know how to eat and drink your way around the <laughs> island, we can tell you! <laughs> okay, uh, our last minute plug for us is our podcast well it is the number one travel and culture podcast in australia awesome award to receive and that is going great guns that is released every friday night through every single podcast directory around the world 
for free. Mm -hmm. And that's about 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We absolutely love creating content, of course, available on every single platform. And best of all, it is free. Gotta love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the rest of the year for the Feel Good family is jam packed. We will be speaking mm -hmm. at some major live events. Yes. We will continue on with our live Q&A on YouTube. Yes. We'll let you know any of these dates well in advance as they come up. Mm -hmm. And we also have something special over the next few weeks coming your way. Yes. Lessons from our lap year. Yes, we do a three-part series full of information, tips, hacks, so much good stuff. All of the things that we have learnt during our lap around Australia, well, kind of more like a figure eight, yeah, but a anyway, like that, wasn't it? minor detail. So much good stuff. If you are planning your own lap of Oz or you are in the process of getting prepared for that, this will be a great one to watch for you. All right, I think that's it. Awesome. All right, for now, look after yourself, look after your family. And happy trails. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly magazine articles and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails.